for those, I see some new faces. So my, na my name is Dan Zatarski. I'm one of the pharmacists here, one of four or five on any given day. Um, uh, this is a compounding lab. We're the uh, first PCAB accredited compounding pharmacy in the state of Wisconsin, so we're very proud of that. Um, just last week, we topped over 14,000 different formulas. So people always call. Every day I get a call, multiple calls a day. What can you compound or what dose can you make? It is infinite. Um, I can compound anything you'd want me to compound. Um, so I'm sure in 10 years from now, it'll be you know double, triple that number. Um, so um, with that, I'm going to just kind of run through the material. Um, like I said, there's about an hour of material. Uh, hopefully, we get some good discussion at the end of this. Um, I did. I was going to try to make these fat, fat bombs at the recipe that I handed out. Um, for those of you that were at the John Whitcomb talk, um, was anyone here at that? Seminar at the church, a couple people. That's the recipes for the fat bombs. So they're very delicious. So I didn't, unfortunately, I didn't have time. Veronica didn't have time to make them for me. So I apologize, but you got the recipes there. Um, they are delicious. So, all right. With that, I'm gonna go through the the talk here, and then I'm sure there'll be there's. A, we could probably spend all night going through all kinds of different details on ketogenesis. Um, but we're gonna, I'm gonna try to. Like I said, maybe a half hour, hour of questions, I think is probably all we have time for tonight, so. All right, with that. Uh, well, has anyone, is anyone on the ketogenic diet right now? A couple people? Has anyone tried it and failed it? I'll raise my hand for that. <laughs> yeah, so it is, it's very challenging. Um, one thing before I do get started is uh, get a, a couple of good cookbooks. Um, I picked up a few just this past week. I honestly haven't even gone through them yet. There's hundreds of them out there, or dozens, I should say. But um, I was just paging through. I can just even hand these around. It'd probably be easier if you want to write the names down. But I did page through those. I did like what was in there. Um, so I think that is extremely helpful. Um, it's, I think it'd be easier to just do ketogenic diet for one or two people. But like for my own family, I'm probably not going to get Monica to get on the ketogenic diet unless she's watching this video and, and sees it. That's my plea to her right now. Um, but having three little kids as well, it's just like, that's not going to happen. They get a piece of candy every night after dinner if they're good. <laughs> so, anywho. Um, so, we're going to be, these are ketones. This is what we're going to be talking about for the next hour. I think it's the, I, I invented, I think it's the ancient fuel. I think, I think we were born and evolved to live on sugar, unfortunately, but I think we're, we're realizing that and we're really not supposed to be eating carbohydrates the way that we are. Um, so I think this is really the fuel that we should be running on most of the time. Um, as we are younger, we can bounce, like my two-year-old, if I put him on a ketogenic diet, he could switch back and forth from burning ketones to carbohydrates probably day to day. Um, for adults, let's just say 18 or older, it takes us more time. It might take us three or four days of eating a ketogenic diet to actually get into ketosis. So it takes time to burn up all our glycogen and so forth and get rid of all of our carbs, so to speak, and all of our glucose storage before we actually start burning ketones and then gaining that benefit. So that's really the tricky part is you really can't cheat on this diet unless you're two or three or four or five years old and you can kind of bounce back and forth and be in both camps. But for the rest of us, for 99% of us, we've got to stick to this diet if we want to do it. So it's kind of your... You're all in or you're not, and that's where the, the tricky part comes in, especially around the holidays. And I'll, talk, I'll get to that too. Um, I always give this, if you've seen me present before, my medical, dis medical disclaimer, I'm not telling you to stop your medications tonight and go home and just start eating fat like crazy. Mm -hmm. So um, talk to your doctor about starting a ketogenic diet and make sure there are some precautions. Um, if you have high risk for kidney stones, I'll talk about that later on. Uh, any kind of liver or gallbladder issues. Um, we have to be very careful. There's things you could do to work around that, but you do want to talk to your doctor about, you know, hey, I want to start this ketogenic diet. Will you help me? Um, there are doctors out there as well that specialize in, in ketogenesis. So uh, if you need help on finding a doctor, certainly let me know and I can get you in touch with one of those doctors. So that's what all of that says. Uh, so what are these molecules? These are, this is the fuel source that I want everyone to be burning on. Um, so if you're the two, the two, three people that raise their hand, uh, you're mainly 
uh, burning the first, uh, first two ketones here. And this is your fuel source. So why doesn't the human body burn carbohydrates or proteins for that matter effectively? You know, why, why am I recommending, or why is it recommended now? There's a lot, like Dr. Um, uh, Mercola just wrote a book, Fuel for Fat, or Fat, I'm sorry, Fat for Fuel, um, recently. And it's, you know, you're eating a diet that's 70% fat, you know, saturated fat, unsaturated fat, really doesn't, you know, it does matter, but generally speaking, you can eat any kind of fat you want and be just fine health-wise. So why, why is that? Um, and then why is it that eating carbohydrates makes us fat. I just tried, I tried to break this down as simple as I could, um, maybe too simplistically, but when we eat carbohydrates, our blood glucose rises. When that happens, insulin is released from the pancreas to take that fuel and push it into fat cells, essentially, unless we can burn it up almost immediately. Um, insulin converts glucose into uh, carbohydra or carbohydrates, basically, your insulin converts glucose directly into fat. So that's one of the key points here that um, I think overall is a misconception out there is that we're thinking if we're eating complex carbohydrates that somehow those are just staying as carbohydrates in our body or turning into muscle tissue and they're not. If you're not burning up that carbohydrate right away, it is getting turned into fat, plain and simple. Um, so if we eat too many carbohydrates, so what's an appropriate amount of carbohydrates to eat? This does vary. I roughly put in here about 15 to 20 grams per meal. You know, so that's two pieces of bread. If you have more than a sandwich at one particular meal in time, you're gonna be releasing too much insulin. When that happens, guess what? Your blood sugar drops. Your pancreas spills out too much insulin and those carbohydrates, that excess amount that you ate, now gets shuttled too much away. And, get, and then we just feel, I just put it plainly, we feel like crap, we feel crummy. I think we've all been there and felt that, I certainly have. Um, you get your sugar high, you've got a lot of energy, and then what happens is you crash, and then you wanna go take a nap. <laughs> um, and so what happens is, or the other example I use is somebody that's uh, sipping on like a soft drink all day long to get energy. They're drinking um, whatever, Coca-Cola or what have you. They're drinking it for the caffeine, they're drinking it for the sugar, um, but they're on this roller coaster ride. They're getting this little rush of energy and then it's dropping. And then what's happening is gluc or, uh, insulin is pushing too much of that sugar out of the blood and into storage. And when that drops too low and we're not used to that, we don't feel well. So this is a be a very vicious cycle. This is basically what I think what's happening to about 60% of us in the US. Probably even more. So then this, this, this whole cycle just keeps repeating. So just so we're all on the same um, wavelength of, of macronutrients, so carbohydrates, I just put out here wheat, pasta, bread, donuts, um, obviously there's a lot more, but just for simplicity. Uh, protein, a lot of it we think of protein as, as animal, um, uh, animal tissue, so chicken, beef, uh, fish, uh, you can put dairy and eggs in that category. And then where we're gonna spend a lot of time tonight is on fat, so there's a lot of different fats. Olive oil, uh, butter, coconut oil, uh, there's obviously fats in meats, saturated fats, uh, put nuts in there. Um, so you do have to be careful on what type of fat that you're eating. I don't have a slide on this, but um, if we think of all the fats in just one large bucket, there's really uh, two buckets that we, I like to distinguish, and that's saturated and unsaturated. And I think typically we're kind of all brainwashed to think that saturated fat is bad for us, um, that it's gonna clog our arteries, you know, cause inflammation or cause heart disease, this, that, and the other, um, and that's simply not the case, and that's what I'm hopefully going to prove tonight to everyone. Um, you know, the, I use this um, as an example. So coconut oil is saturated fat, but eating this 24/7 is not going to make you fat. Um, it's not going to clog your arteries either. So, 
Um, so you got to think of fat in a completely different mindset leaving uh, tonight. It's, it's not going to create uh, increases in cholesterol. They will temporarily, and I'll talk about that too. Um, but it's not going to create this insulin resistance picture where we're continuing to put that fat into storage. We're actually going to start burning it up. The trick with this, this whole concept with, with a ketogenic diet is that, like I talked about before with the two-year-old, you can't switch back and forth. So you either are doing the ketogenic diet or you're not. And there's like little exceptions to that and there's different uh, intermittent fasting that you can do and incorporate. Um, but for the most part, starting out for about the first three months, you want to just strictly do a ketogenic diet. Uh, so we have to flip this in our mind. This is a big thing. This is what I was taught probably in third or fourth grade or whenever you get taught the food pyramid. Um, uh, this is from the Department of Agriculture. So it's got six to, six to 11 servings of bread, cereal, rice, and pasta. I don't know how you get all those carbohydrates even in your diet, but in one day. Uh, two to three servings of vegetables, two to three servings of fruit, um, only two to three servings of uh, milk, yogurt, and cheese. Two to three of, here's, um, here's where we're gonna live right here. We're gonna completely flip this. Um, veal, poultry, fish, dry beans, eggs, and nuts. And then it says fats, oils, and sweets up here. So we're gonna sweets. scratch out, yeah, I know, right? We're gonna scratch out the sweets. We're gonna live right here, fats and oils. That's gonna be our base right here. Actually, that's gonna be our second layer as well too. Vegetables will be our third. So you wanna flip that in your mind that we're really eating a lot of fat, a lot of oil. We're not eating too much protein. So the caution with protein, or if I were to compare the ketogenic diet to an Atkins diet, Atkins is very protein based. And that eventually get those extra proteins really get converted into carbohydrates. So that's not good either. So you really, I could think 70% of what's on your plate needs to be fat. That's a lot. If you think of, um, uh, protein, we really only need about 12 to 15 grams of protein per meal. That's not very much. That's, if you think of a deck of cards, you know, I, I love to eat steak, but you know, like that 10 ounce or 12 ounce steak that I can put down, that I could probably, you know, I should eat, eat that over a week, you know, right? <laughs> uh, way too much protein. Whenever I don't feel so good the next day. All right. Um, all right, so ketogenic diet in a nutshell. Um, we need to con consume um, less than 50 grams per day. So if you're gonna write down a number, 50, less than 50. If you're eating more than 50 grams of carbohydrates, and I'll elaborate on that in just a minute, um, you're gonna be getting too much. You're gonna be releasing too much insulin and that's gonna push all those carbs into, into fat storage. It doesn't matter how much you work out, you're not gonna burn that up effectively. So once the carbohydrates are gone, you're allowed, you're allowed five to 10%. So I'm gonna make up some numbers here, but like on a 2000 calorie diet, that's 200 calories of carbs. Each gram of a carbohydrate, you get um, four calories. So you get 50, so that's 50 grams of carbs, right? In a 2,000 calorie diet. But again, two pieces of bread, that's a, roughly 20, 20 grams of carbs. So it doesn't allow you much. Um, <clears throat> once carbs are gone from the diet, the body starts burning stored fat in the form of ketones. I've got a few slides that elaborate on that as well too. There are some cells, organs that need glucose to run. Uh, so protein can actually be converted, like I mentioned earlier, uh, to glucose for fuel. There is a, so I mentioned this already, but again, this is about 70 to 85% of your diet, if you're gonna go do a ketogenic diet, is gonna be fat. If you have gallbladder issues, um, or if you've had your gallbladder removed, you have to consult your physician. You can still do this, but there's precautions that you need to take. Um, you're gonna need to take ox bile and digestive enzymes with lipases lipase enzymes with every meal. Basically, anytime you consume even 10 to 20 grams of fat, you're gonna to wanna to take ox bile and lipases. You can still do it, but you have to be very cautious about that. 
So is, was anyone here for the Dr. Petty talk like two, three years ago? He did a talk in January ab about, <coughs> um, about weight loss. And this, what he talked about very much mimicked a ketogenic diet. Um, and you really want to think of fat as fuel. That would be something else I'm going to write down and kind of just keep running over my brain that um, it's not carbohydrates, it's not protein, it's fat. I'm going to get all of my energy from, from fat. And that's just been such a bad word, I think, in our culture that we just have to get rid of that. And it, I don't, it doesn't matter to me if it's saturated or not saturated. I'm going to burn it up as fuel anyways. All right. So here's a this is a lot of physiology. Um, so there's a lot of different ways we can get energy. Um, I pulled this out of my physiology book from pharmacy school. Um, but basically one, what I wanted to get out of this point is it really, so up here is food intake. So you've got um, your protein, your carbs, your, your fats. <coughs> They go through the digestive process. They all get broken down into their um, smaller molecules. So proteins get broken down to amino acids. Uh, from complex carbohydrates, they all get broken down into glucose, into sugar, basically. Uh, your dietary fats get broken down into fatty acids um, and glycerides. That all gets dumped down here into, basically, our mitochondria. Doesn't matter really where all of this material comes from. Well, it does, but in this essence, it doesn't. And it, what we're trying to do at the end of the game here, it, uh, to win the game, so to speak, is to produce ATP. That's our fuel. So how, it doesn't matter where we get our ATP from in general. We can get it from protein, we can get it from carbs, we can get it from fat. But what's going to give us the healthiest lifestyle? What's going to give us the best health benefit? If we have these three, three, three to pick from, and all we're trying to do is get some more ATP, what can I do digestive-wise or food-wise, diet-wise, to give myself the best health outcome. It's going to be right here. Again, hopefully I can convince everyone of that tonight. All we're trying to do is create energy to live and survive. Um, that's really all we need to do. Uh, here's a little bit more physiology. So um, this goes through, again, just different breaks down, breakdowns of the carbohydrates, the fats, the proteins, and so forth. Um, they all get, again, dumped into um, the Krebs cycle or the citric acid cycle to produce ATP. Um, so again, this is basically another depiction, a little bit more simplified. Right here, so again, this is, if you think of the car, I always think of a car engine when I kind of go through this stuff in my mind. You know, when you're trying to get the gasoline and the oxygen into the cylinder for the explosion to produce the energy, this is my cylinder. It doesn't matter up here where this material is coming from. It, you know, it can come from glucose, it can come from protein, it can come from fat. And it, they're all going to produce ATP. But what's going to be the healthiest choice for me? Right here, ketones. They're in this equation. So why not give myself the health benefit of just dumping ketones right into the cylinder of my engine and get energy out of it? I'm not going to release uh, glucose, or I'm sorry, I'm not going to release insulin that's the, then going to create more fat on my body and more inflammation. So that's really the key thing right here. How do I get more ketones in my body? Well, I've got to push out all the carbohydrates and I've got to eat a lot of fat. This was uh, supposed to be a picture. Imagine the Krebs cycle right here. <laughs> I don't know why that didn't show up well. Probably on the transfer my slides. But again, if you can think of a I always think of, a, again, a motor in a car, the, the cylinder where the combustion is happening. That's your, that's your Krebs cycle in the human body. And that's where we get our energy from. <clears throat> all right, so myth, uh, I, I was going to start putting all these myths in my slides. And I, start, I was going to number them. So this is myth number one, but it's the only myth <laughs> that I have. <laughs> so I ran out. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> myth number one. Um, the human brain can only run on glucose. I was taught that in pharmacy school. Not the case. You can run on ketones. Very simply. You do not need glucose to run on your brain. You don't need it. You can burn. Again, the, your, brain, your, your brain tissue is producing ATP. This last, this two slides ago, all I need is ketones. They're right here in the equation. 
the answer was in the physiology book that, that I was given in pharmacy school. We just decided to ignore that in that equation there. All right. Don't you just feel like you've all been lied to? Oh, okay. All right. Um, so regulation. So there, there are some other enzymes that we need in our body to produce these ketones so we can get ATP from. Not that this is terribly important, but this just goes along with the physiology. Um, but the point I wanted to make on this slide about these enzymes um, is they are very tightly regulated. So if we screw up the equation and we cheat, and I go home and I have my Belgian beer that I love to have every night, and I decide to have like two or three of them, there goes my, I just busted my equation, ketose is out the window, you know, good luck losing weight for the next three, four days, because I've just screwed up my ketosis diet. Um, so the, um, insulin highly controls how these ketones are made in the body, because if once insulin's released and we start consuming carbohydrates, our body's not gonna switch back over. It's kinda like trying to run your, again, I'm gonna use the car analogy again, but you're running on uh, regular fuel, and then you know these newer cars out there, they, some of them can run on e, e, uh, what is it, ethanol 85. You know, they're a lot less fuel efficient, uh, but you can't just switch back and forth. You can't blend them either, too. Um, so if you're gonna run your body on ketones, you're gonna run them on ketones. That's really what you wanna do. You don't wanna be spilling insulin out of your pancreas, it's gonna shut down the process that we wanna to try to achieve tonight. All right, so I kinda of summarize this. So every cell in our body needs energy for the most part. There's a two, couple minor exceptions to that, but if we just all think of that in general. Energy is produced in the mitochondria. Again, that's the cylinder of our engine. Mitochondria are responsible for producing ATP. That's what we're running on. Uh, ATP is the energy our body uses as fuel. Burning fuel does create free radicals. So there is, on the back side of this equation, um, just like with the car engine analogy, I'll keep going with that, there's exhaust, right? We gotta get, you know, if we're burning a fuel, there's waste material created. In the human body, uh, we do get free radicals. There's other stuff too, I'm not gonna get into all of that. But the point tonight is that Regardless if we're burning carbohydrates, if we're burning protein, if we're bur burning fat, we are going to create free radicals. The beauty of that, though, is that with that equation, you can manipulate it. And to create the least amount of free radicals, guess what fuel gets to create the least amount of free radicals? It's fat again. Beautiful. I love this diet already. <laughs> um, free radicals, if you get high free radicals, are linked to, you know, I'm not going to spend any time on this, uh, a little bit I will, but... Um, Free radicals are linked to 60 different diseases. There's so many different diseases that are, free radicals I just think of oxidative damage. It's just putting more wear and tear on your body is the way I think of that. Um, so I, li I liked this picture. So how, how to lower free radicals. So I wanna get you over here in this nice blue flame. I wanna have a, have a, a fuel that burns nice and clean with, with very little um, metabolic waste. I have no idea what burning in any three of those things. That looks like a propane torch to me, but um, that's what I want to. That's what I want my flame to look like. Is a nice blue flame. You know, this probably is going to create soot on this end. Um, we don't want that. We want a clean burning fuel. Um, so yeah. So a long history of misinformation. Um, we could spend. I could spend two hours just talking about this, like I said, saving it for another talk. Um, but why saturated fats got improperly, improperly labeled as unhealthy. Um, so 10 years ago, I got introduced to coconut oil and I've been eating it on and off. There's a, again, you can eat it. I, for a side note, um, I am trying to get into ketosis. I'm not quite there yet, but I ate a half of this in the last three, four weeks. I mean, you eat a ton of coconut oil, or at least I have been. <laughs> um, so there's so there's that. So you know, I, I always think all all the sa all the saturated fats on. Um, I'll go back to that steak, that ten ounce steak that I just ate. Um, you know, there's probably sixty grams of saturated fat, you know, lying around it in, in it. Um, you know, and hi historically, I'm thinking, oh, I shouldn't eat all that fat, but that's the fat you want to eat. You know, there's. 
but again, we have to put that in perspective. And I think my next slide talks about this. It's got to be, you know, grass-fed. It's got to be organic. You know, a lot of the, on the flip side of this too, though, that we have to realize is in, in fat tissue itself, humans, animals, there's a lot of toxins are stored in fats, right? And there's a lot of stuff going on there too. I'm not going to get into that tonight. But um, when I'm talking saturated fats, I'm talking clean saturated fat, if I can use that term. Um, food industry and the use of synthetic fertilizers, food additives, uh, glycophosphates, AKA Roundup. Um, there's a lot of stuff out there that has made a lot of our food just terribly unhealthy. Uh, and just in general, national dietary guidelines. You know, I was taught the food pyramid, you know, so many years ago that I, we had to eat all these carbohydrates. No, we don't. <laughs> um, and now there's just an overwhelming uh, pile of evidence that the, you know, the low-fat diet experiment is, is a failure. Um, and again, we could spend a lot of time tonight going through. I've got um, a lot of um, primary literature, just different research articles um, that I was looking through in preparation for tonight's talk about you know, tumor cell growths uh, and survival time in a ketogenic diet. Um, I mean, there's just so much information out there now that's telling us that um, what we can say is that the low-fat diet is not healthy, period. And there's multiple different health issues. So there's things like cancer that they're studying, and you know, tumor growth, um, diabetes, heart disease, and the list is going to go on and on and on, Alzheimer's. Um, so diabetes, just some quick numbers here. So with with diabetes in 1978, we had uh, five point, let's just round it up, 5.2 million Americans diagnosed, according to the CDC. Uh, in 2013, that number is at 22.3. Obesity from 1980 to uh, 2017 was from 16 to 45%, according to the uh, Journal of American Medicine. Um, cancer, you got, and this number might not seem that outrageous, the, from 75 to 16, uh, there was 40, um, out of 100,000 uh, patients uh, or people uh, with new diagnosis of cancer, that number rose to 449. So that doesn't seem like a big jump out of 100,000 people, but statistically that is a significant number. So we're losing with, if we just look at the, let's just call it the traditional American diet, um, again, from 1975 to 19, or to, from 2016, we're losing the battle on cancer. There's more diagnoses of, of new cancer. Uh, heart disease, uh, I didn't have any old data or historic data on that um, that I could um, uh, rate, but for like just seven years ago, let's just round that up to 37% of Americans living with heart disease. Um, 13 years from now, that projection is going to be up to 40%. You know, so this, this low-fat diet, is, is these numbers speak for themselves. This is not a good thing for our health. Does anybody go out and buy like low-fat potato chips? No. Yeah, they're awful. They taste horrible for one, but they're just taking the fat out of the potato chips and putting more carbohydrates in there. Sure. Now, vegetable oil isn't a good fat, for the record. We'll talk. There's a whole list of good fat, um, <clears throat> certain fats you do want to avoid. I do have a slide on that, um, but don't go eat potato chips. That's the worst thing. You've got all the carbs, and you have vegetable oil. Bad and batter. <laughs> uh, all right, so that's all the bad stuff. So the benefits, the benefits of, of burning a clean fuel source, better mental clarity. Again, the brain is made of 60% fat anyways. Um, so we should put more healthy fats in there, more omega-3s, get better cell dynamics and, and fluidity. Um, Eating a clean fuel source, um, no more food cravings. They're gone. I mean, I used to get food cravings all the time, all the time. Can't tell you how many kind bars I've eaten. It's ridiculous. Like, why don't they make these? Why do they only put six in a box? <laughs> uh, I know Tom over at Sendix way too. <laughs> um, lowering the risk of cancer. Um, I'm not going to get into this entirely, but there's a, something called the Warburg effect. Um, Cancer cells have a different metabolism. When a cancer cell needs a cancer cell needs energy too, and a cancer cell has mitochondria. 
their mitochondria only get two ATP per one glucose molecule. Every other cell around it that's non-cancerous gets 30, I can't remember what the number is, 36, 38 ATP. So cancer cells are horrible, they, their engines are shot basically. They cut a glucose molecule in half and they get two ATP. Um, that's why they need to create new roads to themselves to create more blood flow to get more sugar. So if you just go onto a ketogenic diet, like it talks about in this research article, guess what happens to the tumor cell growth on a ketogenic diet? It starts diving down. You just, you're starving the cancer for fuel. It can't run on ketones. It can't run on fat. It needs more carbs. That's basically the Warburg effect. Uh, weight loss. It's like, again, we have to get out of our minds that fat is going to make me fat. It's not going to happen. Again, but you can't be in both camps. You can't be ketogenic on day one, day two, day three, and then go eat Culver's on day four. <laughs> can't do it. I tried it. It doesn't work. <laughs> um, improved energy, uh, reduced inflammation, and again, the list can go on and on. Um, but that's just my high points. As I'm experimenting with the ketogenic diet, I can tell you I've, uh, well, the, my joint, when I wake up in the morning and my feet hit the ground, my knees don't hurt as much. Um, energy's through the roof. You can ask all the staff here. You can ask Kelly how obnoxious I've been with all of my energy. You tell them, you gotta get stuff done. <laughs> you like the Energizer Bunny? You're like, why is everyone working so slow? Um, you gotta be careful with that. Um, the food cravings are gone. The mental clarity is, is way up. Um, so all, all very good things. Um, so what it, you know, again, the clean burning fuel. Um, cleaner fuel source helps to lower insulin. Research studies indicate a lower blood insulin level and improved insulin receptor sensitivity leads to a slower aging process. Mm, sign, you know, sign me up for that. Um, so the, I always think of, you know, you can, I did a lot of um, diabetic training and I had patients come in with their glucometer showing me all their blood sugar levels and so forth. After a while, you know, the patients figure it out. They're going to test their blood sugar when it's best. You know, when it, right before a meal or when they wake up in the morning, sometimes it'll be the lowest. So they'll figure out their own body's physiology um, and they'll start, you know, manipulating the data, so to speak, and testing it at the right points. Um, but you want to make sure that you're not pushing, you want to have the least amount of insulin to manage those small amount of carbohydrates. So the more carbohydrates we in, end up consuming in a day in general, if you do that day after day after day and, and, and the weights keep going, you know, your weight keeps going up and up and up, you need more insulin to push those same amount of carbs through the door and you're just pushing them into, the, into fat storage anyways and then it creates this whole cascade of inflammation. Um, so you just don't want to do that. Um, minimizing protein uh, leads to reduced pr uh, production of uh, insulin growth, growth factor one. What does that mean? Um, so you, again, you don't want to eat, to eat too much protein on this diet either. 15 to 20% of your diet is going to be protein. Um, so excess um, insulin growth factor one results in advanced aging and risk of disease and cancer. And this IGF-1, there are some benefits to it. Um, and um, it helps with growth and, and development per se. But as adults, we don't want a high IGF-1 level. Um, just going to wear down our body quicker, essentially. I lost another slide. All right. Um, Oh, maybe that was just a prelude to this diet. Okay, so I'm just going to review this. So on a ketogenic diet, we are focusing on net carbs. So when we start reading food labels, you're looking for the net carbs. Let's see if I got a food label here. So this food label, I just grabbed this just as a to have. Um, total carbohydrates per two scoops, 11 grams. So you're going to have to learn how to read food labels on this diet, at least to begin with. And it's not terrible. Um, they are terribly confusing, I would, I would argue. Um, that's why I need like a whole class just to figure these things out. But, uh, so total carbohydrates, 11 grams. Uh, dietary fiber is, is five, and then sugars are seven. So really the net carbs on this, 
if you take the total carbs of 11 and you subtract the fiber, you get six grams of carbohydrates on here. I don't know why they have seven. Maybe the numbers didn't match up. But usually the sugars would equal the total net carb. So patients will ask um, about carbohydrates and, and how much can I eat of this or that. And with vegetables, you get the carbohydrate, uh, fiber is in the carb count, but you get to subtract that off the number. Uh, so you can have as much fiber as you want. Um, you can really have, if you want to have like a fiber number, six, if you can even shoot for 60 grams of fiber a day, that would just, that's a lot of fiber. Um, so when reading food labels, subtract the grams of fiber from the uh, total carbohydrate count. So again, in this example, it was total carbs were 11 minus the five of fiber, you got six grams of total carbs per serving. So that is a powder I do. I'll mix that with uh, coconut oil. Um, you could do that with any, any low carbohydrate um, powder that you like. Uh, throw some coconut oil in it, um, blend that up, and, and there's your smoothie. Um, and then for, um, again, for vegetables, you're not eating the potato chips that I mentioned earlier. It's, um, I have a list of this too, but it's, it's only the, the keto-friendly vegetables. Uh, cucumbers are great, celery. Again, a lot of this, if you get the um, cookbook, they give you all of these lists, all the do's and don'ts for vegetables and all the different food sources. I'm not going to go through all of those tonight, but you get the idea that if you do a ketogenic diet, you're going to need about 7 to 10 servings of vegetables per day. That's a lot of vegetables, um, but you need that for all of your electrolytes as well, too. We'll get to, we'll get to that in a moment. Uh, oh, I did put it. I did. I put a short list up here. So keto, uh, ketogenic friendly vegetables. We've got asparagus, avocados, broccoli, cabbage, flour, celery. You know, so some of these things you got to be careful with. Like we do a lot of thyroid medication here. Uh, a lot of patients, <clears throat> excuse me, with um, Hashimoto's or autoimmune thyroid issues. Um, and you got to be careful with your cruciferous vegetables with with certain thyroid dysfunction. So I, you know, these. That's why I hate giving a list because there's always exceptions to every list, right? Um, but you got to be, you know, just look at that and adopt it to, you know, what your health needs are. Uh, kale, mushrooms, salad greens, spinach, zucchini. I will say, as I, I have been uh, consuming a lot more fat recently, cucumbers at least taste sweet to me now. I mean, your taste buds change. That's cr never thought cucumbers as a sweet vegetable, fruit, whatever it is. <clears throat> um, sorry, there's a little bit out of order. Quick note on fiber. Um, our bodies do need fiber. Um, they need both soluble and insoluble fiber. Um, start low, go slow. I think I mentioned 60, I think, uh, dosing up to 50 grams per day, 50, 60. Um, probably gonna start with like 10 grams of fiber a day. And then the key note on that, drink, you know, drink at least an eight ounce glass of water with even five or 10 grams of fiber. If you're gonna do like fiber capsules and things like that, Drink plenty of water with your fiber. All right, so, so fats. Um, a ketogenic, ketogenic diet equals up to, again, 70 to 85% of fats. Um, it says choose your, choose your friends wisely and your fats even more so. So we're gonna get into that. So again, going back to the, if I were to put all the fats in one category, within that there's two subcategories of saturated and unsaturated. Um, you wanna be, you need both. Uh, but in the in the unsaturated subcategory, you've got um, you know moly or um, you got mono unsaturated and polyunsaturated. When you, and so when you get into omega three fatty acids and omega six fatty acids, those are unsaturated. So these are all just different categories of fats. But at the end of the day, for our health benefit, when you get into fats and you get into unsaturated fats, you have omega threes and omega sixes. Like the vegetable oils, those are omega-6 fatty acids. You want more omega-3 fatty acids. You want the fish oils. Um, that's, that's my best source of omega-3 fatty acids. Walnuts have omega-3 fatty acids. Grass-fed beef has omega-3 fatty acids. Um, I think what else? Eggs that are cage-free have omega-3 fatty acids. Um, healthy fats, again, are... are main key to the success with this program. Um, avoid all processed fats. So like if you go back to like a Atkins diet 
a lot of protein. Um, you know, people are eating beef sticks and summer sausage and this and you know. Um, you don't want to go down that road. Not in this. Not in the ketogenic diet. Uh, avoiding your vegetable oils. Talked about that briefly. Canola, peanut oil, corn oil, uh, so soy oils, uh, and then anything with trans fats. The nice thing is now, you know, that is on, on labeling for the most part. Um, so again, stay away from the processed fats. Um, you want to go with a raw, kind of whole food, if you will, fat. Um, so we need clean burning fats. Uh, so I had examples of clarified butter, which is not for sale. <laughs> so I got this at Woodman's last night, um, which is on sale. There's only about like 12 of these jars left, so if you want to get it, I run over there. Um, so that's, that's ghee. Uh, coconut milk, make sure it's unsweetened. Uh, chicken fat, coconut oil, MCT oil, olive oil. I'm going to go through those, um, I think almost line by line here. Um, I love coconut oil. Um, again, that's a lecture on its own. I've got, um, I don't even know how I found this, but like 10 years ago, I came across a naturopathic physician, I think he's out west somewhere, Dr. Bruce Fife, and I had to dig all these books out. Um, but it, there's just so much information just on coconut oil alone. Um, that um, there's just so many health benefits to it. So anti-infective properties, it uh, protects against viruses, bacteria, uh, improves absorption of fat-soluble vitamins. So when you take your vitamin K and D at night, your K-Force, people know that name, it's just a supplement that we sell here. When you take your vitamin, vitamin D and your vitamin K, take some coconut oil with it, or any kind of fat oil for that matter. Um, and then coconut oil has what's called um, medium chain triglyceride oils within it. Uh, basically, um, MCT oil diffuses directly into the, into the uh, hepatic portal vein. So what I put on here, I use this terminology, it's it, the instant blue flame effect. Um, so with MCT oil, you don't need any processing to break it down. It's going to get immediately absorbed into your bloodstream, circulate immediately throughout your body, and you're going to feel the benefits of MCT oil. Um, so that is that. So when I think of coconut oil or MCT oil, I'm getting my blue flame instantaneously. Or flaxseed oil. Or flaxseed, yeah. <coughs> Uh, so MCT, so more in detail on MCT oil. Um, you do want to go slow with MCT oil. Um, again, this is a saturated fat. It's liquid at room temperature, unlike the coconut oil is a solid at room temperature. Just the reason for that difference, you know, you think of all oh, this saturated fat in this bucket here, uh, it's going to clog my arteries. That's what I kind of intuitively think of, but that's not the case. I want to I want to retrain my thinking that that's going to clear my arteries out going to clear all that inflammation out of my system because I'm not allowing insulin. When I consume that bucket of coconut oil, I'm not releasing insulin. When I release insulin, I create inflammation. When I create inflammation, all hell breaks loose. Right? We all, I mean, it depends what the weakest link in our DNA is. You know. um, so too much can cause GI upset, uh, almost like reflux, acid reflux issues, loose stools. Um, if you take MCT oil at night, uh, it's probably going to cause you insomnia or just difficulty sleeping. Your mind is just, again, you're just putting direct fuel into your brain. Again, you have to be in a very ketosis diet for these effects to take, well, for the um, insomnia effect to take place. Um, the GI issues will happen if you just take it and you're eating carbohydrates daily. Um, any type of liver dysfunction should not use MCT oil because, again, it's just, all of that fat is getting emulsified by bile and it's immediately getting absorbed right into our uh, portal vein, going into our liver, getting, it's not even getting metabolized, it's just basically running right through our bloodstream. Um, so you gotta be careful with that. Coconut oil is still okay because there's a processing that needs to take place there. Uh, Avocado is another great product for uh, the, the ketogenic diet just has a wealth of healthy fat in it. Um, I call it the super fruit. Um, 
great for weight loss, it's nutrient rich, has a lot of antioxidants to soak up free radicals. We're still gonna produce some free radicals, you know, some exhaust, so to speak, in, in our burning of our new fuel. So avocados are great at that. Um, and then it just, who doesn't like guacamole? <laughs> Unless you're allergic to avocados, right? I love that stuff. Um, and then olives and olive oil. So again, um, the, these oils that I just went through and olive oil included, this is gonna be, again, just thinking, this is 70 to 80% of what you're gonna be consuming. It's a lot. Uh, Three and a half ounces of, of olives, again, I'm approximating here, um, have over 90 grams of fat. So if we go back to a 2,000 calorie diet and you're going you know, 80% of a two, you know, let's just make it, so 1,000, that's 800, that's 1,600 calories from fat and divide that number by four. I have no idea what that number is. Um, 400. You need 400 grams of fat a day on this diet. 400 grams, that's, that's crazy, right? Um, well, you, look, you're getting almost, let's just round this up to 100, you know? Eat four, eat four ounces of, of uh, olives, um, you got 100 grams right there. You're 25% you're of the way there. Um, antioxidant heavy, uh, heart protective, anti-cancer benefits, uh, and the list goes on. So a lot of olive oil, uh, a lot of olives on this diet. In general, no. Mm -mm. Again, organic, clean, all that kind of stuff. Yep. Um, we touch on a lot of this already, but again, with proteins, avoid the processed meats. You want free range organic. Um, avoid, avoid low fat dairy. I've got a slide on the do's and don'ts on dairy, I believe. Um, avoid lean meats. Look what I'm saying. Avoid lean meats. When you go to the restaurant, I want the fattest steak that you've got. That's, that's what I want. Don't cut the fat off, leave it on, as long as it's grass-fed. <laughs> uh, so again, you're looking for grass-fed, organic. Um, wild game, uh, seafood, uh, definitely omega-3 rich, again, of, but avoid farm-raised. They're typically fed grain diets. Um, you don't want that. Thought I threw these in there. So, talking about wild game and seafood, um, that's a king salmon out of our wonderful big pond of Lake Michigan. Now, I didn't want to put these up there, but I, I said, what the heck. I mean, the, the, there's a whole debate about the health of the water that it's swimming in and the toxins and the mercury and yeah, yeah. Um, but they taste so good. And there's so many omega-3 fatty acids, even in four to six ounces of a filet. Um, and this was the biggest fish that we caught, which was a 25 pound king salmon this past summer. A lot of fun. All right. Um, I told my cousin I'd put his picture up. <laughs> I took that picture. All right. Um, so, okay, so that's, that's protein. Uh, for dairy, stick to high fat. Again, seems all counterintuitive, right? Uh, but you're sticking to high fat dairy. You do want to limit your consumption on that. Um, a little bit, again, go grass-fed organic. Um, examples here, butter, ghee, uh, cream cheese, uh, brie. I've been eating a lot of brie lately. It's very tasty, especially with, I love eating it brie with walnuts. That's yeah, a delicious snack. Um, for dairy to avoid, you were, uh, milk, cottage cheese, yogurt. All yogurt. Yeah. Too much sugar. If you look at the... If you look at the fat, carbon, protein, it just, it's not going to fit in here. You could have some of it, a little bit, plain yogurt, yeah, yeah, too much protein. In general, I mean, you can, yeah. Yeah, that would, I would, I, I cut, I didn't put that on my list, but that would have been the next one, yeah. <laughs> yep. Um, for eggs, free range, organic, um, eat as close to raw as possible. So no scrambled, no fried. I love, I love, I just had like four scrambled eggs the other day, like at 10 o'clock at night. <laughs> They're delicious, but 
when I read about this, I was like, wasn't I? I'm afraid of E. coli with that, though, a little bit. But that's just a scare that I have. But um, so I, when you when you overcook the egg, you're breaking down the nutrients and the, and the proteins and so forth. You're you're wrecking you're wrecking your fuel. Soft boil, you can do. Yeah. Yeah. Or poached, poached or soft boiled. That's how you want to eat your eggs. Uh, nuts and seeds, um, nutrient dense, organic only. Um, best choices here: macadamians and pecans. Limit to a, a few ounces a day. The, the, with, well, I just love eating them with brie. Right. <laughs> yeah. Um, all right. Um, I should probably. I'm going to put this in. A, I'll. I'll email this. There's a couple. There's another slide I have too. Um, I, I apologize. I just didn't have time to get all this uh, typed up in different ways. But I'll. I can easily send this as a as a email attachment. Um, so you don't have to frivolously write all this down. But. Um, Common mistakes when starting a ketogenic diet. Eating when not hungry. Um, I can definitely raise my hand for that. Um, even just starting out, I, I always want the, the eggs and bacon that Sundix made every morning for me. Delicious. Um, but now I, I'm eating like, bolt, basically, does everyone know what Bulletproof coffee is? Yeah. Does anyone not know what Bulletproof coffee is? I mean, I'm just gonna run through it. I mean, there's different versions of it. Basically, and you can use coffee, tea, and whatever hot drink that you want. Um, I'm just making a general recipe here, but tablespoon of coconut oil, table, tablespoon of grass-fed butter. I would do like one or two teaspoons of MCT oil, heavy whipping cream. Shake that up, blend it up, and you're good to go. And I'll, I've been drinking that for three, four weeks now, and I won't eat lunch here until two or three o'clock in the afternoon. And I am not hungry. Oh, oh, yeah. Um, I mean, it just, it's profound. Once, you know, for those that are on the, I saw three hands go up wherever on the, that are on the ketogenic diet. I mean, I don't know if you feel the same way, but it's just, um, when you consume all of that fat, again, it's just high octane fuel is what I keep thinking in my brain. You know, fat isn't going to make me fat. Fat is fuel. That's what I keep thinking. And it's high octane fuel. It's the best fuel. Least amount of free radicals that are being created in my body. Um, again, another another common mistake with uh, ketogenic diets is eating too much protein. So again, you're you're roughly around that 30, uh, 15 to 30 percent of your total calories. So again, that equals out to about 35. I rounded some numbers there, but 35 to 60 grams a day. So not a lot of protein in there. Um, uh, forgetting to eat your vegetables. Um, so again, seven to ten servings of vegetables a day. It's a lot of vegetables. That's the part I'm lacking on. I'm not getting enough vegetables. That's why I think that cucumber tastes so good. Uh, focusing too much on ketones and urine. I didn't get into a lot of testing tonight. Um, I think I do have one point on it in an in a upcoming slide here. Um, but when you get, if you're going to do the ketogenic diet, um, and there's some resources I have here, if you just call me and I'll email them to you, but, um, or the book by um, Dr. Mercola, uh, Fat for Fuel, has a lot of resources in it too. Um, but when you get into a ketogenic diet, there are some certain things you're going to want to set up for yourself so that you have less likely to fail. And one of them is, is actually measuring your ketone levels, and there's a few different ways you can do that, and there's some equipment expenses and things like that. That can kind of get kind of pricey, quite honestly. I was looking on... Um, some websites last night for different ways to test ketones, a, a blood ketone monitor, uh, and so forth. And there's a, actually a breathalyzer for ketones. Uh, but you're talking two, three hundred dollars. So I didn't really want to focus in on that too much tonight. Um, focusing too much on the on the on the scale of weighing yourself is what that's talking about. Number five. Um, when you start on a ketogenic diet for the first week, two, three weeks, you're probably not gonna lose a lot of weight. You might lose a little bit, um, but you're really converting your engine over. This is really what you wanna be thinking about. Don't worry so much about losing the weight at the beginning. Um, you're gonna notice just changes in your physical structure. 
Um, and that, those are the things you want to be more focused on. Um, another mistake is not adding minerals. I'll talk about that again too uh, coming up here. But you want to make sure you're getting enough magnesium. You want to make sure you're getting enough potassium. Um, you're going to eat a lot of salt on this diet. You can go crazy with salt. You can't get too much salt on this diet. So if you like salty food, you know, <coughs> go, go at it. Um, as long as it's not attached to a carbohydrate. See, the food industry has really figured this out. You know, with the carbohydrates and then wanting us to eat and then salt's making us thirsty and so forth. And again, we have to drink a lot of water on this diet too. Um, too much fat. So again, you, you don't want to eat 100% hey, too much fat, right? That's one, a mistake, eating too much fat on this diet at 70%. Um, but you got to do, again, 10% carbohydrates, a little bit there, and then again, that 15 to 30% on your protein. So make sure you are balancing that out. Don't go way overboard where you're just eating nothing but coconut oil 24-7. Even though I said that earlier, don't do that. <laughs> um, and then too many carbohydrates. I learned this from Dr. Petty's talk three years ago. Again, that max number, and this has been reiterated in all the resources I've looked at for this, for this uh, talk tonight, max of 50 grams of carbs a day. I mean, everyone says that, so just hold true to that. And then the other little trick that I learned from Dr. Petty's talk is 20, no more than 20 grams per meal. If you get over that, again, I'm, again, we can argue, you know, somebody that's five foot two versus six foot four, and they're 100 pounds versus 200, you know, some numbers there. But in general, no more than 20 grams per meal. What happens after that point, there's a tipping point in all of our physiology, and then all of a sudden you get more than, than 20, Guess what happens? You spill over too much insulin out of the pancreas, drives your blood sugar down too low, and in two to three or four hours, you're going to be hungry again. And you'll be raiding the fridge or the pantry, whatever it is. So I always keep those numbers in my brain when I'm tracking food. Um, the other mistake on a ketogenic diet is cholesterol. So if you adopt this diet, which I do recommend you do if you want to get healthier, is don't worry about cholesterol. Your cholesterol will rise. <clears throat> it's gonna stay elevated for probably a good three months once you start a ketogenic diet, but it will go down. It'll go back down to normal. It'll go lower than it was prior. Um, get a baseline cholesterol test, um, start the ketogenic diet, but don't test it again for another, at least three months of six months out. Don't start a ketogenic diet and go to your doctor and in two to three weeks and he's gonna to wanna to put you on you know, some kind of medication to lower it, because it will be elevated. <clears throat> on a side note with that, di so I'm going to go back to the eggs for a second because in my mind I think of eggs I think a lot of cholesterol for whatever reason, um, but eating a lot of cholesterol does not make your body cholesterol elevated. There's only about 20% of your dietary, that what you eat for cholesterol, only really bottom line goes down to your cholesterol numbers on your lipid panel. So don't worry about eating cholesterol. Uh, it's not going to, again, influence your cholesterol levels negatively. Uh, so starting a ketogenic diet. Um, like the, the one good reference, like I said, you got to get a couple of good cookbooks if you're going to do this. And then I, I lost my other book. Maybe this is, oh, yeah. I really did like the Mercola book. Not that I'm telling you all to go out and get it, but um, I can send out a reference of different resources too that I liked. But this one was very good. Um, it, it goes through a lot of different, a lot of the similar points that I'm going through tonight. Um, so make sure you plan ahead. Get everything set and ready to go for yourself. Um, this is where he talks about purchasing, purchasing testing supplies, uh, blood glucose monitor, keto monitor, breathalyzer, urine test strips. I did go out and get um, the urine test strips, and um, that, that is helpful in some regard. Um, the, really the best way when you're going to do the ketogenic diet is to invest. There's a, a glucometer out there, so it tests blood sugar and ketones, but you have to buy two different strips. Um, but you're probably looking at about it. When I was looking and pricing this out, you're looking at a good two, $250 investment for that. Well, it's kind of hard. To, it's kind of hard to get around that. Yeah. Um, 
I generally, at this point right now, I feel that I can get away with just the urine test strips. I mean, it just from me researching and kind of stuffing this all in my brain, if you do that, you create the diet well enough for yourself. Unless you're really stuck on the numbers, some people like to have all that data and look at all those numbers, and I'd say go out and you know make the investment and do that. Um, but I think for the urine test strips that I bought, you can I could purchase them through here through our pharmacy wholesaler for you. I think they're like ten bucks for a bottle of fifty. Yeah, so they're, I think that's a lot cheaper way to go, more efficient way. Um, you definitely want to get a food scale. I mean those are inexpensive, um, and I would get I would get baseline labs though. Um, the labs that I like are like the fasting insulin, a lipid panel, and then a C-reactive protein. That's just a, a measure for inflammation in the body. Because you're going to see those levels go down. So this is not to be confused with fasting glucose level. Doctors love doing a fasting glucose level. I want to know how much insulin is being dumped into your bloodstream um, when you're not eating. Because if there's a lot of insulin being dumped into your bloodstream when you're not eating, that's a problem. And that's going to cause inflammation. Um, so that's when I was doing education for, um, for diabetics, I never, the doctors don't test for this, so I never had that number, but I, I just love to see that number because that's really the, the truth behind how many carbohydrates you're really eating. Uh, record your body measurements. So again, um, again, if you really want to get into the ketogenic diet and look at all of your personal data, you know, do a, um, measure your body fat percentage. There's a few different ways to do that. Um, so for body fat percentage, for men, we want to shoot for 18 to 24% um, is ideal, no more than 24%. For women, uh, 25 to 31. Lower is fine too, but that's kind of your, your sweet spot range. Um, for waist size, um, important predictor for health. So. I do want to spend a little bit of time on this, so I wouldn't, you know, measure your waist. Again, that's between the bottom of your, from the, your ribs down to your uh, belly button on the midpoint. That's what I want you to measure for, for waist. For men, that goal, that should be 37 inches. For women, 31 and a half. So there's numerous health studies that indicate numbers above that range there leads to so many other health risks down the road. Um, so we really, you know, something very simple to do, right? Um, to take a look at that number and just track that for yourself on day one, on day 30, and you know, six months down the road. Um, again, don't worry about your weight. Take, take your recording um, weight at the beginning uh, of starting the ketogenic diet, um, but don't get caught up in your weight right off the bat. Wait a good three months down, well, still record your weight once a week, is what I always typically say, um, but don't be fanatical about it. Quick note on kidney stones. Um, so being on a ketogenic diet may increase your risk of kidney stones. So if you've had kidney stones already, if you have a family history of kidney stones, um, you want to talk to your doctor, you know, about that. Um, hey, I'm going to be starting. I want to start a ketogenic diet. Um, your doctor can prescribe something called potassium citrate to, I'll say, minimize that risk for getting kidney stones. Um, so that's important to, to note. Um, for the rest of us that don't have that family history or personal history of kidney stones, drinking plenty of water and pushing the minerals. And again, a lot of the minerals are coming from our vegetables, seven to 10 servings a day. All right, so how to start the new journey? Um, again, I haven't been doing a good job at this. I still have my three kids at home with <laughs> my wife that's not eating ketogenic with me. Um, but stock in the pantry, um, I, I don't know what I wrote there. I must have been too late last night. But you want to, you know, everywhere you, where you live, where you work, in your car, make sure you've got ketogenic food around so that you're not trapped somewhere and you got to eat a Snickers bar. Okay. Not good on this diet. Even the Snickers minis have five grams of sugar. It's crazy. It's awful. I'm so disappointed. <laughs> they, should make a, they should make a ketogenic Snickers bar. Um, you have to learn to read food labels. Talked about that. Um, getting sugar out of the diet. Um, do not camp in both camps. What do I mean by that? 
Um, again, you can't eat a ketogenic diet, you know, for three days in a row, then go eat Culver's or whatever. That's my, you can tell that's my favorite fast food restaurant. Um, so insulin, the, in my mind, insulin always wins, uh, which means you, you lose, but you gain weight, right? So you, you can't eat keto, especially to begin with. Again, if you're two years old, like my little boy at home, you know, it's funny because he starts eating coconut oil with me in the morning, by the way. He asks for it, which is interesting. Um, and he actually drinks a little bit of bulletproof coffee, but don't tell Monica. Um, <laughs> now it's on the internet. Great. I'll, I'll, edit, I'll, edit, I'll edit that right out. No problem. Um, <laughs> yeah. um, but you, you, it's either, again, you can't burn both fuels at the same time. Our, our bodies... In that physiology, go back to that whatever slide number that was, fifth slide of, of tonight. In that whole diagram, that whole picture, if, if our goal, end game, is ATP way down here, and you've got to get through the Krebs cycle, you want to have ketones plugging in all the time. If you get glucose up here, it's going to shut the ketones out, and glucose is always going to win, and that's going to be your fuel source. You can't run on both easily. Um, Potholes in the keto road. <laughs> and how do I come? Uh, dehydration. A lot of people that go on the ketogenic diet to get all the minerals that, we, that you need are going to be drinking like beef broth or chicken broth, fish broth. Where do you get fish broth? I was, the thing that I always kept seeing, I know, yeah. uh, like bu uh, bullion cubes. A lot of people on ketogenic diets are going to be drinking um, that. Uh, but you want to just keep drinking um, a lot of electrolytes throughout the day. Himalayan salt, like this ghee butter that I got, actually has uh, pink Himalayan salt built right in. Not enough, but it's still nice, yeah. Um, nausea. I mean, I just, you know, just as I'm talking about all this, you know, fat tonight, it's making me <laughs> nauseous to effect, right? Um, if, you, if you're getting nauseous eating a high fat meal, uh, pick up some ox bile. I mean, we carry one by orthomolecular called uh, orthodigestzyme. It's an easy product to take. I've actually taken it um, many a times, but um, if, you, if you're thinking, oh, I can't, I can't eat that or I don't feel well after eating a lot of that fat, um, try adding ox bile to every one of your fatty meals. And that can help with the nausea. Um, let's see, what else? Brain fog. Um, dose your coconut or MCT oil to counteract. I could definitely relate to that. Um, even late at night, um, once in a while, I'll make the, the bulletproof coffee and I'll just put a teaspoon or two of the MCT oil in there and it's just, your brain's on rocket fuel, essentially. That's how I keep thinking of MCT oil. Um, muscle cramps, so again, um, for those of you that do take the K-Force that we sell here, which is the, vit I know we sell a ton of it, um, which is 5,000 units of vitamin D and 180 micrograms of vitamin K2. Um, take it at take your K force at bedtime. Helps with muscle cramps, or it can. And then take it with a little bit of coconut oil, not MCT oil. Otherwise, you won't be able to go to bed. Um, one teaspoon of salt, and then I put any type of I put reactive magnesium in here, but um, salt and magnesium will help with muscle cramps. Uh, fatigue. Um, Talked about this already, but black coffee, tea with uh, grass-fed butter, coconut oil, MCT oil. It's a great way to combat fatigue. That's what I'm drinking right now, by the way. Um, what's that? Oh, okay. okay. I'll, I'll send that recipe for the, um, the coffee. A few more stumbling blocks here. Uh, heart palpitations. Drink more water, uh, more of the broth with electrolytes, so again, salt, potassium. Um, orthomolecular makes a nice potassium magnesium supplement. So again, you don't have to do supplements on the ketogenic diet, uh, like you know, traditional supplements per se, um, but you know, they're out there, there's options. I wanted to incorporate some of that tonight. Um, constipation, fiber, 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 with water, water, water. So um, definitely with that. And, if you've heard any of my talks before, I'm a huge fan of magnesium. It's good for just about everything. Um, 
I do the reactive magnesium by orthomolecular. I do two, two to three capsules every single night, uh, regardless. I mean, that's the stuff that works wonders for many different things. Uh, so there's a lot of different recipes out there for electrolyte uh, solutions. You're going you're gonna to need an electrolyte solution if you do the ketogenic diet, period. Because um, you're going to need all of those, that sodium, that's a potassium. Um, again, another thing that I pulled from Dr. Petty's talk, I think that was three years ago, maybe four years ago now, is to burn fat effectively. You need sodium and you need chloride. And so you need salt. If, you, if you're not losing weight well enough, you're not getting enough salt in your diet. So this is just one little recipe. I'll send this to you as well. Um, but five cups of water, four ounces of lemon juice, um, half a teaspoon of potassium chloride, a uh, quarter teaspoon Himalayan salt, and then uh, magnesium. So I just put like two capsules of reacted magnesium. You can dump that right into the solution. You're done or a scoop of powder. Now, I didn't talk about artificial sweeteners tonight because that's, again, I didn't want to get too lengthy here. How am I doing on time? Yeah, that's quarter, quarter two already. Um, but with the powder, there's a lot of stevia in the magnesium powder. And I, going through this lecture tonight and realizing <laughs> that I used to love the reacted magnesium powder that they made, that they, well, they still make it, there's all the stevia in there. And it just tricks your body into thinking that something sweet's coming down and it's going to potentially release insulin into the bloodstream. So I'd rather you just open up the capsules and dump the magnesium powder right in there. All right, I'm getting down to the end here. Reminders, avoid processed meats. I'd put a question mark by number two. The blood glucose and the blood ketone meter. Again, that's an investment. If you're going to do the ketogenic diet, or you're going to do it with your spouse and so forth, yeah, then I'd do it. You know, and then you're all in, right? And I, then I'd go for it. Um, if you need help getting that, let me know. Um, you're going to consume a lot of salt, a lot of potassium, uh, a lot of magnesium. Again, it's going to come from your, your electrolyte drink and your vegetables. Um, have high fat snacks <laughs> wherever you live, um, home, work, car, etc. Um, I think that's critically important too because when you do get hungry, again, you're only eating when you are hungry. You want something around. You don't want to get caught in that position or you got to eat a Snickers bar. Um, you're going to feel miserable anyways after it. Uh, drink plenty of water. Exercise some keto. So um, keep this in moderation. Um, like I said, smart watch is helpful. Um, so you don't, you're going to burn fat and you're, you're going to lose weight. You don't have to exercise at all. And actually in some of the resources that I've been reading up on, actually exercise can have a negative effect because it's re, it's, it's make, what's happening is you're putting more miles on your engine, right? You're burning more fuel. What do you have to do? You got to go fill up your fuel tank. You got to eat more. You can eat more carbs. So you don't, if you, if you start the ketogenic diet, don't start an exercise program. Just continue doing what you're doing, but if anything, I would moderately back down. Um, so that's the two cents on, on exercise and being on a ketogenic diet. Like I, I got this fancy, you know, you can get a fit, uh, Fitbit or any kind of like um, step watch, and I put on like 10 miles a day just running around this place, which is crazy, because there's 2,000 2, steps in a mile, and I put on like 16,000 steps. That's crazy. Like right now I'm at, what did I just, I'm at 13,000. That's a lot of steps. Dang, I'm tired. <laughs> um, so and there's a lot of the references I was reading is just walking. Just, just walk. <coughs> All you gotta do for exercise. If you like to work out and do that, do exercise because you enjoy it. Not, that's a chore to lose weight. Um, technology helping with, with um, the ketogenic diet. There's all kinds of apps on phones now. Track your food, exercise, water, caffeine. Um, I tend to be an, an Android guy. I shouldn't say tend to be. Uh, you're either Android or Apple, right? So you're, again, one camp or the other. So I, I'm, an, uh, I'm an Android guy. I remember that keeps on that. Um, and Samsung has a, I like it so far. It's the only app I've really used. So I don't have nothing to compare it to that much. Um, but it, I can key everything in, all of my fats. I mean, I just pick all my food. It's, it is very simple. 
I start typing in what I ate for lunch or dinner and so forth, it starts bringing everything up. And automatically it, it tells me um, you know, how much fat, how much protein, how much carbs is in that meal. I mean, it's amazing. And it tracks it throughout the whole day for me. That's you got to key it in. Oh, that's right. You ought to do that on your own yeah, yeah, that's a good point. See, yeah, you're definitely doing keto. I know that. <laughs> <laughs> um, so that's that's really nice to have that. It make, it does make it, a, it for me. It, it's making it a lot easier. Um, <coughs> otherwise, there's books out there. There um, years ago, I used to recommend a book. I don't even know if it's out there called Carb King. And it was just a huge manual, and it had like all the fast food and all the different nutrient counts of the macronutrients and so forth. Um, other roadblocks: um, uh, limited variety causing you anxiety. Um, so again, if you're thinking you're just going to be eating coconut like I am all day, every day, um, you got to get a cookbook and get creative so your your mind doesn't get bored of you know the same ten things. Um, Social pressures, just you know, be prepared for that, obviously. Um, with traveling, um, I definitely found this helpful. Uh, you know, pack your uh, go-to foods, have the you know, nuts or whatever, macadamians, pecans, you know, be prepared to have material with you. Um, you know, just less, less options for temptations there. Um, birthday, you know, celebrations, so birthdays, uh, you know, holidays coming up here. Um, I'd wait till like, January 1st to start this. Really, <laughs> I would not do. I would not do this tomorrow, <laughs> um, or even Sunday. Um, celebrate, uh, or uh, keep uh, keep the focus on the you know on the on the company you're with and the reason, not the food, obviously. Um, so, you know, different ways to get around those things. Um, but you know, you're gonna go to a birthday and not have birthday cake, you know. But maybe take bring your own, you know. Offer to bring your your own birthday cake and make a cream cheese cake. There's recipes in one of those books I sent around with all the desserts. Yeah, I love cheesecake. I already Monica's making me my salted caramel cheesecake for my birthday. I've already got that pinpoint down. Um, oh, this is one thing we bought. So Monica's a little bit on board with this keto thing. So I I did find this gadget. It's hard to see, but this I tried to take a picture of this at home. Uh, the box that this came in, but this is one of those like vegetable shredders. Spiral. Spiral. See, yeah, thank you. I don't know. Monica got this obviously, but you know, instead of eating spaghetti with noodles, it's now sp the noodles are made out of zucchini because they got spiralized. <laughs> so I, I thought, for me, I thought that was kind of neat to get more veggies, especially in our kids too. Um, so it's that. All right, now I'll take questions. I thought that was a cute picture. Isn't that cool? Took that on. That's my little boy. Uh, he's two. Luke, and then um, this is Lily. She's five. But I just love the little head up like, oh, like that. Yeah. Good stuff. All right, I'm done yammering. Question? Yeah, I'll go. How about wines? Like good home? Or do you really get it? <laughs> Nothing. No. I mean, yeah. I mean, you, so if you're going to have a glass of wine or, a, like, again, I'm a Belgian beer um, guy, um, that's like, I count, that's, so you're going to have, again, 10%, again, 10 of your diet is carbs. Um, you got to count that as your 10%, obviously. And so I'll not eat carbs throughout the day if I'm going to have my glass of wine or a beer at night. So you can still have that. You know, and what you and what I would argue is eat before you you drink. That'd be what slow down. You want to slow down the carbs from the alcohol getting into your system. So you got to start kind of thinking about those little things. Yep. Yeah. Little tricks there. You see? So yeah. You, no, but yes. Right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Oh. Sugar alcohols. Oh, sugar alcohols. Yeah. There's and there's recipes like with erythritol in it. Right, so it's a non-nutritive sweetener, you know, but there's side effects to those, obviously. You know, GI disturbances, I'll put it plainly that way. Um, can you have them? Yes, I mean, they're in that, it, but it, it, uh, my opinion on non-nutritive sweeteners, I don't, yeah, I don't count them, but they just trick the body into thinking there's something sweet and there's not. 
But if you're going to, you don't have to count them as cards, though, right? You don't. Generally speaking. Right. You don't have to count, like stevia or anything like no that. You can still have like the sugar alcohols, but um, like, how do you feel about xylitol versus erythritol? I don't have a strong opinion on it. I think, it, I think in in essence, I I'd rather not have any of them because I I don't want to. Um, again, I'm tricking my body thinking there's something sweet, and I think in a and you probably would agree with this too. But like when you're eating so much fat. You're not you're not craving craving you carbs. Craving. You don't. Yeah. I'll you, tell you a bulletproof coffee with a couple drops of like stevia. Stevia. Yeah. Coffee is really. Is really. Yeah, it is. But not like ten drops. Like. Three. Yeah, you gotta be. Yeah, you gotta limit that. <laughs> Absolutely. So yeah. I did um, the coconut cures science years ago, and then I found some bad reviews on it because I was getting help, uh, heart palpitations, and then. There was a, a physician that was promoting that, and then there was a naturopath that kind of chimed in and said, kind of yelled at them and said, "Be careful what you're telling them because if they're not, if their liver is cleansed, they're clogging up their arteries." And I noticed when I went to get the second book because I had borrowed it from a friend, it was discontinued, and no, nowhere in there did it say that. Mm -hmm. And I wonder if there was a lot of just. Uh, uh, well, not lawsuits, but right. Right. issues that they pulled the book. I, and I don't know that specific. Is that the one by Bruce Fife? I, I or is it? It, it might sounds like it's something different, but it was years ago. But that. Yeah. I mean, I, I lost weight on it. I mean, it was really good, but all of a sudden I was getting these um, heart palpitations. So I started googling it, and people said they went to the ER with from. And it's. It was like yeah. three tablespoons a day or something like that. I mean. You, it's, when you get into a ketogenic diet and yeah, you have this coconut issue with these side effects, I think gen, we tend to generalize that it's, it's the coconut oil or it's the saturated fat or it's, you know, and like with heart palpitations, as we talked about, it's probably a potassium deficiency because yeah. you're, okay, you're consuming all this fat which doesn't have these nutrients in it, so it's really well, the missing book, nutrient that did not talk about any, any yeah, so, but the coconut, but the coconut oil, oil yeah so yeah and that's that's, that's its downfall yeah. so you got to do this in, this diet okay. if you're going to do it intelligently okay. yeah absolutely is MCT oil mm -hmm. help with brain fog oh, yeah. if you're not on like, this diet yes yeah all right question you're talking about a diet Right. Yeah. You. No. I'm just doing it for health benefits. Okay. Yeah. Okay. You're. Right. So. You're. You're going to just. You're going to. You're not really going to count carbs. You're just going to eat as much fat until you're full. If your body wants to lose weight, it, it will, right. And if it doesn't, it won't. That's right. Okay. Yep. That's a good, yeah. Yeah, I'm not. Doing it. I might have like five pounds to lose if I. <laughs> <laughs> right? But yeah, I'm, my energy level, again, just a little bit that I've been tinkering with this, is just through the roof. Like I said, it's, it's some borderline obnoxious. So it's like I gotta. <laughs> like or Monica's been going to bed, like. At nine o'clock at night, and I'm up till ten or eleven. I mean, that, when you do that MCT oil, oh my goodness! And I'm doing decaf coffee. It's not. I don't. It's not the caffeine. And I drink a ton of coffee. Oh yeah. <laughs> my little guy slept at eight o'clock this morning. Yeah. Very little. Like low glycemic. Yeah, I didn't talk about that. So low glycemic fruits, like um, blueberries. Uh, not strawberries, no. raspberries, blackberries. That's about it. And not not apples. Well, like like Dr. Whitcomb talks about apples, like um, the tart apples, the really small ones. Yeah, not not the huge, yeah, red delicious that has way too many, way too much sugar. Yeah. Yeah. If everyone needs to, to bolt, uh, thank you all for coming.